mine is. Okay. Say. That's, uh, yep. So let's try this. All right, so I am the Boogeyman here with... And I'm Elisa Ginger, a.k.a. Ginger Snap. And then uh, we got no one else to eat dinner, so that's it. <laughs> we have our producer, <clears throat> Ms. Moist, in the background. Stuffing my face. <laughs> eating fortune cookies. <laughs> And uh, the night he came home. Again. again. And again. Again. And again and again. Can't this motherfucker just die already? <laughs> Michael. He can't die. Don't you know that? Same thing with Jason, but we haven't got a new Jason movie in the last, what, 10 years? Or Freddy, too. We haven't had really had a, in a well, while. Well, we'll talk about that. But Jason is a different story because of the lawsuit. Yeah, and there's also a bunch of studio issues with Halloween throughout the years. The rights that and all too, that. too, with all the different rights. Mm-hmm. Lots of drama with that. So, um, we just came out of the morning showing of Halloween 2018. Jason Blum's Halloween. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or David Gordon Green's Halloween. Mm-hmm. Or Danny McBride's Halloween. <laughs> One of those One three. of those guys. One of those fools. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, obviously my co-host has some real fucking issues with this movie. I do. So I just, I just want to start off the bat. I'm very protective of Halloween because as you know, it is my favorite film. Yeah. The original. Like, I've loved it since I was a little kid and it's, you know, it has a huge fan base. So many people are fans, are hardcore fans and love the original and I'm one of them. So I, I went into this trying not to expect anything and i came out disappointed so i mean i don't know like overall like how did you like this movie did you Uh, go into this expecting because this movie had so much hype it had a great marketing base they marketed the shit out of this movie great buzz coming out of uh fantasia yeah and And everybody was like raving about it that saw an early screening everyone's like oh you won't be disappointed this is so great this is a lot of uh you know twitter uh Mm -hmm. i'm on twitter so they uh a lot of the buzz coming out of that stuff was really positive yeah i didn't really see any negative reviews up until maybe last night oh really yeah. there, so there has been some there, there has been some from neg- fans or like media uh fans okay. uh, i think critics kind of like this movie mm-hmm. which is weird they, yeah. they like a horror movie i know right but maybe it's because of the name mm-hmm. i think i to me i enjoyed this movie and you know hmm. i i kind of liked it i mean compared to what other movies we've gotten, I mean, four, five, six, and then H2O and Resurrection, and then Zombies remakes mm-hmm. and sequel. I mean, that's kind of a low bar to start with anyway. Well, it's so weird because coming out of this, for some reason, I was really comparing it to H2O. I think because that's 20 years after, you know, from the original Halloween, the 1978 one, and it's Lori. And there were some similarities, like the alcoholism. So she was an alcoholic in H two O, and they because like she was so stressed out, and she's like, "I've tried everything. I've tried therapy." So they kind of had that in this one, which I thought was interesting. Yeah. And she did have her insecurity points in H two O as well, but she was also a badass. So I don't know. Like coming out of this, I like H two O a lot better now. <laughs> I think H two O though really dropped the ball on a lot of things. It's like I don't buy that Michael would fucking try to track Lori down like, like what across the country like, to me yeah. that just doesn't seem like believable or something that he would do yeah so to me that's where they kind of lost me and the fact I didn't really like the setting anyway that like the, at the like school? school yeah I, I thought, didn't mind that I just I didn't care for was, the mask I, I just I thought that was dumb and then <clears> the <throat> ending to H2O mm-hmm. where she cuts off his head and then it cut, goes to fade to black and then you had to wait like two more years to figure out what happened yeah you know what I mean? Yeah. And so that kind of that ending kind of left a bad taste on him. I was like, "Fuck, are you serious? Really?" Like, I'm not saying it was that a perf- was, I'm not was saying it was anti-com- perfect. That was anticlimactic in my in my view. Yeah. And then you get her story closed in Resurrection in the first ten minutes, which is also anticlimactic. I guess I liked the relationship that she had a son better. Like, I didn't care for Judy Greer in this at all. I thought she was really annoying, actually. I like Josh Hartnett and how he's like, Mom, get over it. It's been 20 years. Like, he's 
I don't know. I just felt there was a better bond between Josh Hartnett and and Jamie Lee Curtis and him kind of having like a girlfriend and trying to be an adult and like a man, you know, no dad in the picture. I don't know. I just thought the chemistry was better there. And this one, it wasn't, I don't know. I just wasn't really, it's like that wasn't necessary. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I, I kind of like their relationship, <laughs> honestly, between the two, mainly because it's dysfunctional and, you know, she pretty much scarred her child when growing up yeah you know, you know training her for pretty much the apocalypse you know what i mean right. getting ready for that shit mm -hmm. you know that would scare any child at that point in time you know what I mean? for sure and then getting taken away from your mom at an early age mm -hmm. also would have a negative effect especially when foster parents get into it mm -hmm. they're gonna put negative thoughts about your mom into your head like she is not fit yeah so I understood where they were trying to go with that, and that's why they were... And they, even the investigative uh, reporter said, you know, you have rocky relationships with yeah. your daughter, your grandmother, and your uh, husbands. Mm -hmm. And so to me, that <clears throat> makes sense. I mean, she, su she survived an ordeal for 40 fucking years. Mm -hmm. She's not going to be someone that's, you know well adjusted oh for sure she's gonna have like her issues you know she's gonna be traumatized yeah. and yeah. you know whether it be subconscious or consciously or not she's mm -hmm. gonna pass that down to her kids yeah and her kids are gonna see that right you know and you know i think you know her daughter was right to break away from her yeah and she I was but i just feel like she didn't take the seriousness once michael got out she just like wasn't like she should have been a little more strict with her daughter like no, you need but to get they home. But they were estranged, though. That's what. I, that's that's the point that we're. No, 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 home. no. Judy Greer and her daughter. Oh, them. Yeah, yeah. Well, That's a different story. But my point is, is that Karen and Lori, mm -hmm. they were estranged for a long time. They didn't make fences. Right. To to their adult, and so I understand why their relationship wasn't clicking. wasn't perfect. Yeah. So the, to me, that made sense. Um, I really like where they went with this as a final girl because so often we see horror movies. And we see final girls survive this ordeal, mm -hmm. but we never see the aftermath of what that ordeal takes toll on. Mm -hmm. And I really like the premise that they were trying to deliver on, you know, showing that the this final girl, Lois Strode, yeah. was living through it, and yet she never really got over it right. because, you know, my, Myers is still alive. Mm -hmm. You know, had Myers been dead that night? Lori would be a completely different person. Yeah. Like, she would have suffered still because of the trauma, but she wouldn't be... She would have gotten so over gung -ho. it. So gung-ho. Yeah. She would have gotten <clears throat> over it. Cause, right. But if him being still alive mm -hmm. was like, you know, I got to get ready for this. Yeah. Because... Which she any, did in the movie. <laughs> yeah. Because at any point in time... Yeah. He can come knocking. I mean, her house is in the middle of nowhere. It's guarded. It has, like, a security gate. She's got, like, so many guns. Floodlights. Uh, 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 what is that thing? Like, a... um. Under the kitchen. It wasn't a basement. It was, it was like a panic a, room. Yeah. So basically a panic room slash cage slash trap. Um, so I like. Spoiler alert. I know, right? <laughs> Spoiler. No. So I liked that. And I liked that she lived alone and she was kind of like agoraphobic. I like that aspect because that's very realistic. Um, and she is such a strong character, you know, and doesn't take shit. But at the same time, she kind of had a weak side, too. Like, she was drinking in the car and, like, crying and screaming once Michael was um, being transferred. So, she's not perfect. Like, she's got her emotions still. Yeah, she's got flaws. Yeah. And I, I, think that was, I think that was the right way to go about mm -hmm. it, though. Because if they wouldn't have made her seem so perfect, then Which I Which, when think... I saw the trailers, that was what I was... The trailer was, totally makes us look I was like, like wow, diehard. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know? I didn't, I didn't well, like it. Though. She was John McClane. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, she was ready. And yeah. to me, like... Her flaws was necessarily what kind of carried her because mm -hmm. if she didn't conquer those flaws, I don't think she would have been able to beat the shape. No, for sure. You know. But I don't know. Like, like so I like Lori in this, obviously. But I just like, okay. I, I, like, I'm just trying to process just... all of this because it's still in my mind. Okay, so, you know, we <laughs> just literally got out of yeah. the theater about, what, 20 minutes ago? Yeah. And usually when we do reviews, we usually sit with these for about a week. And Which we haven't. So this is, I'm still, like, digesting everything I just saw. Honestly, I was bored. 
Really? Yeah. You're bored. Yeah. I don't know if you heard me sighing a lot. I was like... Oh, that was you? <sighs> yeah. Just because, like, one, there's no jump scares in this at all. There's no slow stalking. First of all, very disappointed Carpenter in the music. Very disappointed. It was so... And I saw, like I told you, I saw Carpenter live a couple years ago. Mm-hmm. Badass live. So badass. Like, everything is great. I know he did, redid the score for this. It's so rushed. It's so quick and fast paced. There's nothing like stalker versus prey, like taking your time, build build up. There isn't any of that. It's well, very fast. Well, look, here's the thing, and I, and I will argue with anyone about this. This is a traditional sequel. So mm-hmm. in sequel and plus in the rules, everything needs to move fast. That's Does the, it though? Yeah, that's the rules of the sequel though, because I don't know. In 1978, everything was slow and deliberate, and it was supposed to be. It was supposed to build up to this crescendo at the last 10 minutes of the movie. You have to remember, Michael Myers isn't like 21 anymore. Yeah, but also you also got to remember that you know he's not a man though. They established that very clearly. He is not a man. He's That's a, more of the sequels no, that he's but not he's, a man. But he, they even touched in on here where he is a thing. He's evil personified. Yeah, pure evil. And so the, the point that I was trying to make is that this is a sequel, so it needs to ramp up quicker. But I mean, first of all, he's really, he is an old man, right? Like, I don't know exactly, what is he, 60? He's like 60 now? Yeah, he's 60 now, yeah. Okay, so very fast mover. It's but He should have just been running because... Well, I'm just saying, like, the stuff he does, though, you know? Yeah. 60 is a new 20, I guess. In this movie, it is, apparently, because everything's so fucking fast. But I don't know. Like, you see his face so much. He's not really stalking. Everything, he's walking super fast, in my opinion. Like, everything's just so quick. And, like, there's... there. You have to remember, these guys aren't horror directors. They're, they're comedians, right? They, mm-hmm. They're known for comedy. There was no jump scares. There was nothing that would like reach out and like grab you it's just boom in your face i don't know it's kind of like rob zombie actually like very intense and like rock and roll halloween music i don't know i just there, there was a score i did like um i think when the granddaughter's running away when her the guy gets killed mm-hmm. on the fence that one score was good but i don't know like it was just very fast and i just wasn't really into it even like the intro um music wasn't good in my opinion i don't know i just wasn't i wasn't into it wasn't into it really yeah i wasn't into it Mm -mm. i don't know i i disagree with you i I was i was kind of into it uh from the very moment that it started i i appreciated what they were trying to do because honestly if you really kind of like halloween is so interesting not even as like Michael Myers, but just as a franchise in whole, as a whole. Yeah. Because there are literally four different fucking storylines that you could. It's watch. a mess. Yeah, there's a lot going on in all it's of like them. It's like the choose, like you know, just that meme going around with all the Halloween. Yeah, says, follow choose which, your adventure. choose your own adventure. <laughs> you know, and I, and I yeah. feel like you know this one kind of touched what Halloween two did, which in Halloween two, everything ramped up. So yeah. You, you know, you, the first kill was in the first 10 minutes, and then... But he uh, still wasn't... It wasn't so rushed, I feel, though. No, it He's wasn't still... rushed, but my point is is that everything was still quicker, that's yeah. what I'm saying. And I feel like with this one, you got to remember, they're trying to get to a new audience. Right. And this audience, and we talked about this last week mm-hmm. with Hellfest. They yeah. want everything now. Mm-hmm. And so I think with this audience, I think this would resonate more because... It's a lot quicker than slow. But I feel like the first 30 minutes were a drag. And then once he got out and started killing, that's when it picked up. Like, they could have cut a lot of that time from the beginning. Yeah, but the first movie, the first kill doesn't even start till like, 45 minutes I know. into it. Well, no, the first, he kills his sister in the first. No, but after that, yeah. it's 45 minutes to the very first kill as a human, but as that, a man. But that, still, he's, he's stalking. <laughs> You know, that, like we just said, like back then they took their time with things. It was a slow burner and there wasn't a lot of blood and all but that. But you got to remember, like, you know, slashers nowadays they're are all non-existent. Boom, boom, boom. No, yeah. but they're, they're non-existent now in this day and age. Yeah. Because can you even, off top of your head, in the past 10 years, can you name a credible slasher movie that hit cinemas? The Strangers. That's not a slasher movie, though. The Strangers? No. Strangers Pray at Night? 
I'll give you that. You haven't seen it, but that that one's more of a slasher. The second that one, one is like I, that's what I heard. Mm-hmm. But it was not a hit. But my point is, when was when's the next slasher movie that was a hit? People might want to say Happy Death Day, but I didn't really. But you and know. nothing else though, right? I mean, I can't think off the top of my head. I'm sure I've seen one that's like not an indie one. Yeah. Not, an, not a low budget one. Because there's tons of slasher movies low budget. Yeah, ones. there's like tons out, but I'm like, and I'm just I, so unimpressed with horror these days. I don't know, like I can't even think. You know, and I was against you know Green and McBride doing this, but I felt you know as a worthy sequel to the original. Mm-hmm. I feel this one kind of does what a worthy sequel is supposed to do, which is carry on the storyline. And, you know, actually have that final fight that you want at the end. For sure, the final fight was good. I liked it. I just, I don't know, I just was very, like, bored. I was very, like, I like, again, I think because if you're so attached to something and you're so attached to the original, you have this, like, don't fuck with it kind of mentality. And But I went into this knowing, like, okay, try not to expect too much. But I just felt like... I don't. I honestly don't know what to say because I'm just very unimpressed. Very unimpressed. Like there's nothing original about it. Like yeah, it is a sequel. It's a reboot, if you will. But I don't know. Like what if they did include Halloween? I think we were also talking like in the past we've talked and I said I I you know I'd be okay if, I'd be okay if there was no more Myers and maybe if they did a new version of a Myers like passing it down to someone else or each year do a different theme like how Halloween 3 was intended. Yeah. So I I'd, I'd want more of that and originality rather than like shitty sequels, you know what I mean? Yeah, but we're all the only thing we're going to get is shitty sequels though. <laughs> Well, because Blum wants money. He wants money, money. But I don't know. And, like, I think, um, I don't know. I just, I'm just still trying to process it. Because I, I just was, like, annoyed and bored and, like, so critical of this movie. I don't know why. I noticed that we laughed. And I thought there was some genuinely funny jokes in there. I, there I did were. think that some. Uh, but I noticed when we were laughing. And we would all three kind of chuckle at the same yeah. jokes. The, no one in the audience Nobody else laughed. Yeah. No one laughed. It was weird. No one got yeah. the jokes. There was some yeah. really genuinely funny stuff in there. There was. Like, I got peanut... What was it? I got peanut butter on my penis. It was that. <laughs> no, even that. It was that. just random stuff. Yeah. Or like the doctor, like, I'm sitting... What was he saying? They're like, say, put, sit down. He goes, I'm sitting. Right? I am sitting. I am I'm not sitting. sure what you mean. <laughs> I thought that was that really was funny. The, in fact, the jokes, I don't know why, but they made me think of um, airplanes. Yeah. Like, yeah, I could like see that. Kinda, I don't know what it was about it, but the vibe about the jokes made me feel like that old movie. But The jokes were funny, and I feel like they were okay. I just didn't like the little kid joking, like, when the fucking babysitter gets killed. Like That was weird. Yeah, yeah. that was an odd one. Like, if you go up there, you're going to get killed. Like, that was too... And the men in this were so weak. Oh, my <laughs> God. If we were coming to, like, World War X... And these men were, no, oh my God, wimps, wimps. Yeah. Maybe that was the point, though. Like, they just wanted strong women in this, but the guys That's what were I was so... thinking. So maybe they were trying to really play up the, yeah. the women being the powerhouses. And and they didn't have um, her boyfriend die, who I really wanted to die. <laughs> yeah. Really wanted that douchebag to die. Yeah, really, and his friend did. Yeah, like, what was that? Called it. <laughs> that guy was a douche. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I mean, this movie does not weigh out its flaws, that's for sure. Uh, I mean, I, again, I enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. As far as ranking it among the other sequels, I think I'd probably put this four or third. What would be your order? The first one, obviously. Mm -hmm. Uh, Halloween four, actually, believe it or not. And Halloween six. Hmm. Okay. And then I'd put this one underneath six, and then, yeah, any order. 
<laughs> from from then on. From then on. Yeah, okay. I mean, because five is bad. Five is pretty bad. Five I like. Five is really terrible. When they shot that, there was no fucking script for it. Yeah, I know. I did like the character um, Tina. I think her name was in the movie. I want to say her name was Tina. Um, but everything else was just the mask was horrible. Like, yeah. I did like the mask in this. You liked the mask. I, I will did. say this: the mask was okay, but I don't think it would have had that much hair over the years. Like the yeah, like it, it would have been, been more mangled or like it was crisps. pretty combed, <laughs> wisps of hair. <laughs> like it was very thick and full, and yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, especially for them trying to make it realistic that it had gotten aged, you know, aged yeah. by it being all wrinkles, kind of looking. Yeah, it yeah. actually had wrinkles, like it had it wrinkles on crumbly, it, but then the hair still looked all. Smooth. The hair was like perfect, yeah. <laughs> but my rank or my v- ranking of all of them, and I'm not including Rob Zombies in this because I don't count that as part of the Halloween series. Uh, I do one, two, three, four, H two O six. You can't count three because the three is not not in that. It's still part of Halloween. No, you can't count it. It's got to be Myers only. Oh my God, who says? That's the rule. Come on. They counted it. They counted it. They Carpenter. It as yeah. A no, the cod. That's not, that's not they all. That's not and Myers is in it. No, and it's not canon. Yes, he is. No, it's not canon. <laughs> Okay, it's excluding, be Myers. excluding you season. You can't have your little argument about the little dollhouse. Yeah, because that's not the Myers house. <laughs> we was. were arguing, our, our thing got cut up, but I was arguing, saying how there's no Myers house in this. And he was like, yes, there is, but no, there's not. <laughs> there's no Myers house. Whatever. But you can't you can't you put season of the witch in it because it's not a Myers film. Okay, well, excluding season of the witch, I do one, two, four, H two O, six, five, and then this one would be last. Or resur- this one and then resurrection. Resurrection would be last. Resurrection still be last. Yeah, J- resurrection is like Jason X to me. <laughs> I don't know why. It just it's so bad. Minus the space. Minus the space, yeah. Uh I don't know. I mean I don't know. This I mean again, we usually wait for to do our reviews like a week after so that way we have a clear head on it and that way we're not as you know. I don't know. The stuff that got cut off was pretty good. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no. You guys really got going. I know. So it always happens too. Whenever I like I rant. Like remember when I ranted about get out saying how bad it was and then it like cut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so yeah i got a new uh i got an sd card on here so <clears throat> and it's only like 24 24 gigabytes so i only got an hour left on here well it's okay I and mean, i like i said i just i'm so disappointed i I'm, I'm very disappointed yeah i mean i could totally see like fans being generally split on this movie yeah i can totally see that i already see like uh people already having negative reactions to it as well as positive so i mean i mean it all depends on how you view and where you sit on this movie yeah i don't know i just feel like the timing of things weren't right like the timing of the kills or the timing that's supposed to scare you or be like the jump just didn't work for me in this compared to like the other ones no yeah that, that makes sense you know, and I tried to watch four the night before, mm-hmm. and you know, I couldn't get through it. <laughs> you don't like it anymore? You just I, like I, I I don't know. There was I was still working on our project too. Mm-hmm. On top of that, so you know, that's probably one of the reasons why I couldn't watch it. But I just I just felt bored. And I was yeah, like, uh, that's no. how I felt with this new one. I was just kind of bored. But I but I liked four growing up as a kid. You know, Me that too. Was, that was one of the movies that I rented. And a lot of fans like four, because they do feel like it. And has... that's a really good twist at the end. Yeah, and you know that's where it should have gone in the next movie. I know. Because in the next movie, they kind of brush it off. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like that doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, I think even Daniel Harris was uh, like, "What? What? Why don't I talk? Like, is she found it very weird?" And then all the drama that happened with her with for the sixth one like that i can't believe they did that to her well what happened so she was supposed to come back in the sixth one and she got divorced you i guess the age she was she was 17 Mm -hmm. or she was going to be 18 or something like that 
And they came here saying, well, you know, we want this, we want an adult for this role. You have to be like over 18. But if you divorce your parents and become a legal adult, we'll like, we'll take you, we'll, we'll, we'll do it. So she did all of that. She went through all of that. And then something happened where they said, no, sorry, we're going to go with someone else. Isn't that messed up? So she actually like had to divorce her parents or get it. What do you call it? Emancipated, I think yeah. is the word. And she had to go through all of that, and they still like fucked her over at the end. So she was mad about that. Yeah, and watched... pissed too. Yeah. So I don't know, but yeah. So why do you think that people like this one so much? Um, because it does have Laurie Strode, and it is kind of like the final goodbye, maybe like for for Laurie's character or for Jamie Lee Curtis's character. And it does take place in Haddonfield. I think people will like that still. Um, and because maybe Carpenter came back to do the music. And maybe because... But I mean, even if there, there were those things, if the movie was... Why do you think they perceive them? Why do you think they think the movie is good? I don't know. I, 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 I really don't know because I think true, true, true hardcore fans are going to be super critical of this movie. And they might be biased with certain things. They might like the kills in this, but I honestly can't say right now. I don't know. Because I'm not a fan of it at the moment. So <laughs> I'm still trying to process it. And I just I just wasn't into it. I was sighing a lot. I was bored. The characters were really annoying to me, especially the men in this. They just were super weak and annoying. So I, I don't know. And it wasn't a fun movie either. Like, that's another thing, too, is, like, a lot of the Halloweens, people say they're fun movies to watch. Uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> well, the first one, I think, because it's it's this very 70s, like, the you dialogue. Know, the first, I, like, I watched the first one on, on the screen, like, in the theater. Mm -hmm. And I can honestly tell you that watching it, like, in a theater with a crowd is probably the most fun I ever had watching it. Yeah, like, it's a fun experience to watch. So this one, I don't know. I don't know. And it's like, I'm sorry. You wouldn't have a serial killer on a bus with other people when they get transferred. You'd be in a van, a private van with security. There'd be cop cars following behind. Why are they doing this on Halloween? Uh, why didn't they notify her saying Michael escaped? I don't know. There's just like a lot of stuff and they didn't let like the news really know right away. There's just a lot of stuff that was like flawed to me. You I know? mean, you know, a lot, you know, like, there are some, like, logic <coughs> issues and dumb decisions made in this movie. A lot of dumb decisions. Like, the, all those gas station kills. How many people were killed at the gas station? Four. In the total. middle of the day. Four yeah. people. Four. And, and there's then did... no alert put out on the news or anything that, like, there's a serial killer yeah. on the news. That's what I'm saying. And then they <laughs> said... That wears a mask. They pretty much know who it is. <laughs> And then they said Lori is agoraphobic, but why would she go to, like, the, the granddaughter's school? Why would she, like, go out to dinner? I don't know. They should have made her, like, a total hermit, you know? Yeah. But, I don't know. I'm just, like, I'm trying to I'm trying to find things positive I like about this. But the, some of the kills were good, like I said. And Jamie Lee Curtis was good. That's pretty much it for me on this one. I don't know. Gotta digest it more. I'm just... Again, people don't have high expectations because <laughs> then you won't get like super disappointed it's true yeah i don't know i mean i mean movie it, it is what it is it is a blumhouse movie too on top of that so there's that yeah you know but to answer your question i think the i think why people are going to resonate with this is just because of our our social climate that we're in now is that you're seeing women being empowered. And I think that because you have like someone like Laurie Strode, mm -hmm. who was considered to be a victim 40 years ago, and then now she is the hero, and not only a hero, but someone that takes vengeance. And, you know, someone it kind of symbolizes empowerment for women. But I we think. had that 20 years ago. Yeah, but it wasn't the same effect, though. You know what I mean? The, the look, up, look at our stuff. Look at the shit that's going on in the news now. Yeah. You know what I mean? With the whole Me Too movement. The, yeah. I stand with her. You know, and I think this, I think this movie is really trying to say something about women being empowered and really, you know, dictating their own lives. Instead of being a victim, you mm -hmm. know, she's... She doesn't want to be the victim. She's she's the hunter now. 
But in a way, she kind of is still the victim because she lived 40 years like that and she didn't really get a life. Yeah, but at the same time, she got what, you know... Again, you know, a lot of these Me Too people have gone through years. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until 20 years, 15 years, 10 years later till they came out and said something. Yeah. And again, you know, I think with our social climate that we're in now, I think this is kind of coming out at the right time. Mm -hmm. And people are already making a big fuss about it because Laura Strode is fucking gun ho and, and mm. gun rights and stuff like that. It's not like she's packing an AR fucking 15. <laughs> yeah. Everything she has is home security. How old, is she, How old is she supposed she's, to be in the movie? I mean, if she was, what, 18 in, in high school in 1978. That's been 40 50, years. Late 50s? Yeah. I'm going to say late 50s, yeah. But... Yeah, and what's weird is I read, I didn't get to finish the article, but I read, like, this Halloween film was supposed to be for conservatives. Did you see this article? No, I didn't see that. And I don't think this is conservative at all. Like, <laughs> at all. I really enjoy, I have to say, I enjoyed, well, I was had low expectations for different reasons, not mm -hmm. because I, but just because, um, I don't know, I just... The trailer, I, I don't think... It surprised me. The movie surprised me. And the one of the parts I did really enjoy is the little nod to the ending of the original Halloween where they look over and he's gone mm -hmm. after he goes out the window. Yeah. And then where she goes out the window and lands on the ground and then Michael Myers looks out and she's not there anymore. I like that too. <laughs> yeah, that I did like that Yeah, part. But I wanted more mask breathing, you know? We, that wasn't... Not a, not enough of that, in my opinion. You know, it was very fat. It none of the deaths made me tense. Or they weren't tense. Me out. Yeah, they were just like violent. Like, yeah, yeah. And it was, and not that I'm into that stuff, and like I don't feel, I don't know. It's I, but there wasn't. I think what you're trying to say is there wasn't a build up. Towards, There's no suspense. Yeah, suspenseful it wasn't build up suspenseful. At all. I don't. I don't remember sitting there and ever feeling like. Except for when he walked past the baby in the yeah. I did feel that way. Like, but there like was about no. That. There, it was just very quick, and even the sound effects weren't on par with the killings. Like, yeah, it didn't. It's just like boom. Like it, it wasn't. It didn't have any build up, and it didn't lead up to anything. And no one jumped. Like nobody was scared watching this. Yeah. yeah. So even if you watch the original to this day, when especially in Halloween two at the hospital Ew. when his face comes and that music is like yeah. ah, like that's still to there the state there's up. a lot of very cr creepy unsettling scenes in the original yeah where he's in the background mm -hmm. he's in the shadows he's standing in the sheets and then he's gone mm -hmm. those were are really really good shots this one it didn't really have that it's and like, it didn't have a lot of that i did like the track i think it was a tracking shot of when he's like walking and they're following but then it even like when he kills that lady with the hammer yeah, didn't do anything for me. But the trailer made that seem so cool. But then, like watching it in its entirety, I'm like, okay. I think it's because you know it's coming, though. Maybe, and I think they did re reveal too much in the there trailer. There was a they lot of revealed, you know it's they, coming. They revealed, yeah. they, 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 uh, revealed that closet scene too. Yeah. And you know that was something you should have like. Kept that should have been a surprise. Yeah. yeah there was sure. also another. There was a scene in the trailer where the ghost. In the bedroom, mm -hmm. if, if I remember seeing this correctly, I remember like when the officer is clearing the room mm -hmm. and he goes into the other room, you see the ghost stand up. Yeah, I thought it stood up, right? And I, and he, he's walking toward him. Yeah. Or, I, or it's it's either that or Michael comes out of that same room and then follows him. Oh, okay. I, yeah, I remember it being different there in the trailer. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I, I remember something happening to mm -hmm. him right there yeah not the way that it played out yeah i was kind of like eh. also when when they were back at um Lori's house and she was looking for him in the closets i was thinking why doesn't she just shoot up her closets yeah like before opening the door like that didn't build suspense for me because it seemed stupid to me given right. her state of mind and where it seemed to me like she would sh not try to open the closet door she would just shoot up her closet thinking that he might be in there be more like forceful yeah you know? yeah that's the thing like she seemed like she was so ready for this battle when when it finally came it seemed like she was less ready yeah. which is probably you know that probably happens in her life like 
But you're you can, scared. You, you can know. be prepared for it, anything in life. Yeah. And when it hits you, it's real. Then you you, you know you got to resort to your training. Yeah. You can't I don't know. be emotional to the right like that. I mean, when they train you how to clear a room, mm-hmm. you don't shoot the closet. You got to <laughs> clear the closet because what if her daughter? What if her daughter was in there? What if her granddaughter was in there? That's discipline. I guess so, yeah. That's yeah. discipline. Knows why she didn't do this. She needs to clear the closet first because what if there was someone else in that closet? There was, but he was dead. Yeah, he was dead. but the point is, <laughs> spoiler alert. But the point is, what if like there was someone else in there? You yeah, know, that happened to be, that happened to get in there and hide in there. You yeah. know what I mean? And she True. shoots it, Good and point. then oh shit! You know what I mean? That's, I wish kind of like the little boy. Yeah, on the bus. <laughs> yeah, yeah like, but he was done... a little kid though, and he, it's already established that he didn't want to be there, and he was already jumpy. So when the guy popped out, you know, he the twitched. psychologist. He, yeah. he, he didn't I, have trigger discipline because his finger was on the trigger. Mm-hmm. And I wondered, too, if there was some kind of, this might be like, seem way off in left field, but so the doctor seemed to have sort of this emotional attachment, like, relationship with him. Yeah. Where he was like, I'm your, do not worry, like, I'm your caretaker, kind of, you know, and he would talk to him a little bit like that, like, and... Kind of like the when thorn he scenario. shot the doctor, <laughs> well, there is a little bit I of thought the to myself, yeah, maybe that's why he killed the little boy. But like, I don't know. I, I didn't care for him. The the new Loomis, as they say. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and maybe because we're so attached to old Loomis. I actually liked the part where he put on the mask. I thought that was just kind of gorf. But like, gorf, like okay, gorf, I'm making up words. But in the beginning, like, when he's on the bus, he goes, "Did he escape?" Oh, uh, the of course he did. <laughs> like everyone's gone. Where the fuck have you been? There was just a lot of stupid questions. Yeah. A lot of stupid things happen in this movie, and I'm like, really? I don't know. Like I would, I just, I don't know. <laughs> well, I was thinking that maybe when he asked that, that he meant like, did he? get away from the cop like after they showed up to try to when he said did he escape everybody was gone no but i mean <laughs> <laughs> nobody I was mean, there like, like he was asking the cops kind of did did you get him type of thing like did did he escape from you but it was also? a little boy that asked that oh then I no it was the cop it. it was the cop no when the boy comes in he says did didn't he escape no, no that was the cop the, no he said don't shoot and he shot him oh the cop asked him what happened and then he says, "Did he escape?" But it's like obviously, like he was hiding. He was there the whole shot. Time. And he was he hiding there out. the whole time. No, he was on the ground, passed out. But like he, the guy had a gun, so obviously the cop had the gun, so obviously something was going down. Yeah, when you see a bus crash and then you see inmates <laughs> running around. I know, but I'm saying the psychologist obviously, like, hello, obviously it's not right because the cop is there with the gun, and like obviously they didn't get him. You know, well, he don't know that. You know, you no, know. He doesn't know that. I don't know. I'm just like annoyed right now. <laughs> you don't know that because the cops so have annoyed. to go there. You have to clear a perimeter, clear the area, and then on top of that, you have to clear the bus. And by the time they get to the bus, they find him. So the doctor's thinking they probably already set the set the perimeter up and thinking about that. <laughs> oh what <laughs> thought I just had a bad dream <laughs> I have a bad dream that's how I come over here <laughs> wow <laughs> what <laughs> anyways whoa, I don't whoa. know I think this is gonna be split people are really gonna like it or they're just not gonna care for it so what would you give this what rating would you give this I'd probably give it three Z's Hmm. Oh, three? That's it? I give it. Yeah, what would you expect? I would give it 25. No, I'm joking. I'm like, wow, you must have really liked it. <laughs> must have made I didn't really, really moist. enjoy the joke. <laughs> but it's not supposed to be funny. It's not that comedy. <laughs> well, that's a bad not, thing. If you like I the did jokes. I did say that, but the, they didn't know if they wanted to be a comedy or a slasher. When we were sitting there when it first ended. Like, if it's it a almost... horror movie and the only thing you liked about it were the jokes, what does that say? Well, <laughs> I did, I I enjoyed it more than I thought I would. I will say that. I don't, I won't. What would you give it? It's not something if I would say, you gotta see this movie. Yeah. Like, it's nothing compared to Trash Fire. No, I'm joking. 
<laughs> what would you give it? What would your rating be? Mm. How many moist? <laughs> How many squishy sounds? How many squishy sounds would you give it? <laughs> <laughs> I need that sound effect. I know. I don't. You know, I I agree with Is the three. Is this dry, moist, really moist, or wet? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's or the Sarah Lee. Is it, is it Betty Crocker? Is it Sarah, Sarah, Sarah Lee. Moist? Lee <laughs> Duncan Hines. What kind of moist is it? I would give it semi moist. So, what is that? Like a two or three? Probably like a two or a three. Okay, I give it like, two. I wouldn't tell people not to watch it. I ended, I chuckled through it, and you know me, I like to laugh, and so it made me laugh. Um, and the storyline, I thought they did an okay job with. Um, Making her seem real, the trailer, I thought, oh, she's just going to be like, yippee ki motherfucker, mm-hmm. and like shooting up everything, and and she was more of a real person, which I also liked. Mm-hmm. Um, just some of the th- things like we talked about, or take me out of the movie, like mm-hmm. the little boy, that little boy was adorable. Yeah, he was cute. And, but when he's running down the stairs, and this babysitter's getting stabbed, and he's like being funny. Yeah. And I'm like, what the hell? Like, I'm watching kids scary. lines. Like he should have been screaming. Yeah. Like he's like watching her get stabbed. I'll go get help. And like, like kind of unemotional yeah. about it. And I was like, that doesn't str- that didn't line up to me. And then the the teasing in the beginning with the mask mm-hmm. was weird to me. Yeah. Like kind of took me out of the movie. I'm like, what the hell? They wouldn't be okay with that. I like, know. Like taunting him. Yeah. <laughs> That guy was just an ass. You were all happy when he got... The his, British guy? Yeah, when he got his head smashed, you were like, kind of rooting for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, did, I don't know, like, that was just a weird intro to me. Like, then it goes into the credits. Like, I just thought that was very rushed. Yeah. And, like, it wasn't... It did feel very fast. Yeah. It felt very fast. The kills were not very suspenseful. Mm-mm. And so that part of it, I didn't Mm -hmm. feel anything. I was like, "Hmm." yeah, yeah. I give it like how many owls do you give it? How many? How many (laughs) boos? Did you say owls? Owls. Oh, I thought you said owls. Owls. What? I'll give it like I don't know. At this point, right now, kind of torn between a one point five and a two. (laughs) Snaps. So that's kind of what's my mind. It's like. (laughs) Yeah, like a little... <laughs> yeah. That's what I was trying to recreate, a half of a snap. <laughs> like, at this time. But, like, usually once I see something, I kind of make up my mind right away. Like, I kind of don't really change. I don't know. Then it's like, am I getting too old? I don't know. Like, it may, would I have liked this if I was in high school? Because when I was in high school, Freddie You're like H2O, Jason, Zach, so I'm Well, I was sure. young. I was in high school in 98. I was in, like, what, fifth grade, fourth grade, or sixth grade when that came out? So, yeah, I don't know. Plus, I like Josh Hartnett, so. But, um, no, I don't know. I, I, I have to think, too. Like, I was more excited for sequels when I was younger. Now I get more annoyed for some reason. And I don't want to get annoyed. Man, I want you're to so be cynical. I want to be scared. I want it to be fun and scary, but this just wasn't scary to me at all. You so know? what would you say is a modern slasher that Well, he asked that and it's like that's really tough because there's not a lot. To me now the movies I like like we talked about were like the scary like home invasions, like strangers. Yeah. He's out there, or them, or, you know, things like that. But, yeah, I don't know. This just wasn't, like, suspenseful. I wish the director of The Strangers did this movie, because I think it would have had way more suspense, and it just would have been more on that creep factor, like how the original was. Because you still don't know why he's doing this. Yeah. And they still don't ask that in this one. Like, why are you doing this? Like, Well, they do ask that. Well, I think that was the point, though, they were trying to make... Or maybe one of the things that they felt worked for the first film is kind of not knowing. But they didn't really touch on that, though. Like, they, they just, like, oh, it's Michael Myers. Like, that that's kind of it. Like, there's yeah. not yeah, really... Yeah, but, like, you know, when you have someone that, that you know, killed five people in one night, mm-hmm. you know, all you need to say is Michael Myers, and that's all you need to know. Yeah, but that's a scary name, and they didn't panic when he got out, when he escaped. They didn't panic. That's true. And it's like, hello, there's a, so, <laughs> there's a psychopath on the loose, you know what I mean? So, I don't know. Maybe that's a, another thing for these times, is because everything violent happens, like school shootings happen like once a week, it seems, so we're so desensitized, you know? 
maybe that's another point too like it's just not as scary anymore i don't know i don't know you know as far as like slashers i honestly don't think slashers could thrive like nationwide anymore well what was it like the last slasher you saw can you think of one it's hard right like i'm trying to think like in the theaters within the last like 10 years so what happy death day hellfest uh there was another one i just saw too and i forgot Terrifier, I guess. Terrifier, but, you know, but not even counting indie movies, though. Just counting, like, movies on, on a big scale that have big budgets and a big studio behind them. Well, they're all remakes. But that's my point, exactly. Yeah. My point is, is that, you know, the modern slasher, it's not, they're not going to be able to survive because people... It's not popular. No, So what they not. do is they cash in on... They on just... the crowd that loved something from movies long ago. Movies like, you know, like the... Like, so here's gonna be like the, the litmus test. If uh, the possession of Hannah Grace, I think that comes out in December, which is the possession movie, and if that hits like a home run, then you know we're gonna have a whole slew of possession movies. But we've already had a lot of possession yeah, movies. Yeah, but we haven't had like a, a real possession movie hit theaters since Emily Rose. Emily Rose. Exactly. Yeah. Or even like Deborah Logan, I think was that. That wasn't in the theaters. That was mm-hmm. limited, not nation. Again, talking about big studios. What was the one with Eric Bana that came out a couple years ago? That was uh, a possession movie. Deliver Us from Evil. That was one. Yeah, Emily Rose. You could say kind of Paranormal Activity too. It was possessed. Yeah, uh, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah those yeah, did yeah. really Actually, well. So there have been a lot of those, but I feel like again you have to look at the original Halloween. That was one of the most successful independent movies. They yeah, gave but... chances back then. Now but big studios that, don't do it. You won't get it. They today. fucking should, because we need new. We need a new legend now. We've had Michael. We've had Freddy. We've had Jason. You know, like we need Victor a new Crowley one. should have been that person, but they didn't give uh, Adam Green the chance. Yeah. Because had Hatchet and Victor Crowley like open nationwide, that probably would have been like a really good. That that probably would have been a good hit. I need to rewatch Hatchet because when I watched, it, I wasn't into it. So I, I should probably revisit it. But but you know what I'm saying? Like the studios now, <coughs> they know remakes will be successful. So or reboots, I guess. But they need to take chance on independent cinema. You know, like they need to start doing. No, them what again. they need to do is take chances on filmmakers that actually have a vision and a voice. Yeah, that's what they need to do. They need to stop hiring these people that don't care about the genre. I know. It's frustrating. And it's like when you have people outside of the genre directing the genre film, mm-hmm. it's it's hard because sometimes they don't understand the tropes. They don't understand how certain things are supposed to be. Yeah. You know, and I get like, you know, sometimes it's hard to hire someone that's that's a fan of the genre to di- direct a genre film because they need to separate themselves from the material mm-hmm. and be subjective. But you had like people that are not from the genre directing these movies yeah. and they're not doing well. I know. Because they're fucking up like characters that they fucked up Friday the 13th. Oh my god, it was horrible. They fucked up Texas Chainsaw Massacre and those yeah. directors are well with the exception of, of massacre he went on and did the descent but you know you have directors that are not known for horror movies they're known for like action movies drama movies i uh, feel like foreign sci-fi horror, movies foreign horror has been better than american horror you know like even like lars von trier he's not known for straight up horror but he does really fucked up films that's why i'm so excited for the movie the house that jack built with matt dillon because that's supposed to challenge American Psycho. So, like, those are the types of films I'm excited for. Because those are really outside the box. And yeah. I feel like in American films, they don't do that right now. Well, if because, they do, they're on, like, Shudder or Netflix. They're not in the theater. Again, we talked about this last week. You know how American Horror, like, they know its audience. It's yeah. about kids. Yeah. It's teenagers. Young adults. Mm-hmm. That's who they're trying to get into the seats. Because that's who's going to buy the tickets. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, you know, foreign horror, they they have real adults going yeah. through horrible situations with horror elements. Mm-hmm. And that's why it works. Yeah, and I because feel like because we're older now, we like that more than like... The shit that we get the now. The shit that we get now, yeah. It's like, I'm too old for, and I'm only like 31, but it's, 
Yeah, I don't know. It's hard. Like, again, I do wish... Well, I guess Blum did it with Happy Death Day. Like, that was really successful. And, like, Get Out, even though I don't like it, that was successful. So they do have those, but I just... I'm not in love with those. And everybody else is. And it's like, is there something wrong with me? I don't know. I'm just not into that. Very. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Give me, like, Lars von Trier any day, and I'll take that. Or, you know trying to think of other of other shit I've seen recently. Give me more strangers. Like, I want more strangers. But, I don't know. It's just disappointed, I guess. I don't know. I get It's, like, to the point where you get so frustrated. It's, like, ugh. And that's why you latch on to, like, those independent horror movies because they're so good and they're so original. And it's, like, why can't those be more successful and why can't they be in theaters, you know? Get more acknowledgement. BLD. Prime. Yeah. I mean, that's all I can, I can say about I that. Know. Mainly because, you know, people don't want to go out like five that's miles tr- out. That's true, and it's expensive. Yeah, you know? so it, it, it sucks. I don't know. Uh, as far as big studio horror movies, you know, I kind of gave up on them a long time ago. Yeah, me too. And so that's why I like That's why I like having Shudder. Yeah. The Shudder is just, like, fucking amazing. Mm-hmm. You know, they have all kinds of good stuff on there. Yeah, and Amazon <coughs> and Netflix, but Hulu too. Hulu has some good stuff. Yeah, they actually have some really decent stuff. But you know, I like IFC. Hmm? IFC has good stuff. IFC. Yeah. Mhm. But that's pretty much it. That's our uh, spoiler discussion on Halloween. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't be more enthusiastic. I'm just so let down. <laughs> But, yeah. What can you do? It's not for everybody. No, it's not for everyone, unfortunately. (laughs) Sweet the fuck out of me. (laughs) Hey, stop being a smartass. Alright, so, I'm the Boogeyman with... Disappointed Ginger Snap. (laughs) (laughs) And our producer with the... The voice that that makes you moist. (laughs) Alright, uh, that's our discussion for Halloween Let us know. Let us know what you think about it. Yeah, please let us know in the comments. Uh, add, subscribe to us on Podbeam at Bump in the Night Podcast 1428. Yes, that is a Nightmare on Elm Street reference. Hmm. And then you can find us on YouTube at TVZ Studios. Uh, you know, any questions, anything, any topics you want us to uh, discuss or you know, break down or movie wants to break down, uh, let us know in the comments below. All right. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Stay scary. Bye.